Originally, the way I first heard the amp that ended up being that magic secret amp that is on the first four King's X records, there was a musician's shop in, in North Jackson that used to have shows in this little warehouse area in the back. And there was this band I used to go see there that always played through the Lab Series stuff. And it was to me the best guitar tone I had ever heard in my life. I, I just thought, wow, that is the most amazing sounding amp I've ever heard. I plugged into a couple of them in the shop and everything, and I didn't really get that tone. And I was a bit perplexed by it because it, it actually sounded terrible. But that was where I first became familiar with the amp. And then I moved up to Missouri in 1980, and I was going to school at the time, and I was playing in that band that Jerry was playing in the band with me, called the Tracy Zen Band, by the way. And the keyboardist in that band had a, a Lab Series L5 that he wanted to sell, so I bought his. So I had time to live with it and start learning how to tweak it and try different guitars with different pickups and stuff on it. And it started becoming like uh, just the tone. I love that amp. At a certain point, a few years later, we got hired as a band to play on an artist album that was on the Star Song record label. That's when we moved to, down here to Houston because Star Song was here, the other artist was here, and, and we just needed to be here for rehearsing and doing tours and whatever. During that time, I bought my first uh, Strat Elite. The Strat Elite is a, uh, a unique Strat that was made only for a couple of years that had uh, Fender active electronic pickups in it, which were only used in that guitar, can't be found in any other guitar anywhere. And, you know, those pickups don't exist anymore. I got a few of them from the actual factory that they had left over at one point just so we could get our hands on whatever we could get our hands on. But they're very hard to find and they're one of the most unique pickups I've ever played through. They're some of the best sounding pickups I've ever heard, but because what helps make them sound so good is also what's wrong with them. They're very microphonic and you can uh, pick up a lot of RF signal and noise. It was a difficult guitar to use at first because I never knew when I was going to be able to. I'd, I'd go to some places, it would sound supreme. I'd go to other places and get all this buzz. And Lab Series is bad for the same thing. But at that point, I was using both. When I finally bought another Lab, right around the same time I, I bought that Strat, and I put the two together, I was really expecting a tone that made everybody go, wow. And instead, at first, everybody was like going, yeah, man, not sure about the whole stratty kind of sound when we're trying to be so heavy, you know. It wasn't thought of as a good tone at first, even within our band. And But after hearing it back within the band on a few things, live things and recordings, and after starting to get a lot of people talking to me about, what are you playing through? How are you getting that tone? I started realizing, no, there's something here. And so did Doug and Jerry, too, at that point. And then it, eventually it became a thing where they wanted that tone. When I tried to use a different guitar, they'd be like, no man, we need that you know, the stratty sound, you know, so it became a beloved tone, but it took a little while to grow on us. It was a combo of using several things that were wrong. For, for instance, my lab at one point, it has a negative and a positive power section, apparently. One side pushes, the other side pulls. I blew out one section of the amp so that only one side was either pushing or pulling and it changed the tone. And it sounded really good to me all of a sudden. I, I took it in to get it repaired because something obviously blew or whatever, but I, I was like, will this thing continue to play this way? And the guy goes, well, have you ever thought about uh, taking the power section out completely and using it just as a head? And I run it through like some Celestian speakers, some of the cabs, you know, like a Marshall cab, the, the cabs that you really like. So that's what I started doing. I had power sections taken out in, entirely at that point. Started using them strictly as a preamp. So all of this stuff was a matter of being forced into doing so uh, to make the system work. And before I was done with it all, I had you know five or six pedals that gave a certain tone that changed this EQ and gave this amount of gain and all this different stuff that ended up being a load of trouble, you know, because everything was stuff you couldn't get your hands on and stuff that was would break easily it was not road ready it was just a nightmare but it was one of the most unique tones uh, you know i've ever heard but it became impossible uh, it was shutting down shows literally you know because i couldn't get gear to work
I'm dog man. I went to dual rectifiers at that point. Uh, I had a good relationship with the book. people at Boogie was using their power already. They had, I think, customized a couple of cabinets for me by packing them and stuff. And, uh, they were just uh, great. They were awesome to work with, just super supportive and had good friends there. And so, yeah, I, I decided to try the dual rectifier because I was hearing some stuff out there with that amp, you know, that was blowing me away. And just like with any amp, when you, you can't just go buy an amp because you hear a tone on an album and, and plug it in and get the same tone, you know, all of us know that it doesn't work that way. And it took working with it, like working with the Lab Series, there was just one mega sweet spot for a tone and it had to be found. But once you found that sweet spot, it did something you couldn't get with any other amp.